partial fractions. So a lot of the times you'll see integration techniques using something as simple as the integral of one over x plus one. Now, obviously this is actually just the integral of x plus one to the negative because it's in the denominator, which through integration through parts, we find out that it actually ends up becoming the natural log of x plus one plus c. Now, what happens when we have an integral that's, let's say, the integral of 2x squared minus x plus 4 all over x cubed plus 4x? Now, here we'll notice that the power in the bottom is actually bigger than the one on top. So, how does this work? This is where the concept of partial fractions comes in to calculus, actually. So there are actually some key things that we need to know before we start integrating this partial fraction. First, in order to use partial fractions, you need to have a lower degree polynomial on the top than compared to your bottom polynomial. And what I mean by this is, let's say we have p of x, which could also just be f of x, it's just a function. And you have q of x, which is another function. This is a polynomial, which basically means that it's, you know, this can be x cubed plus 4x, four, four which is a function. And this needs to be a lower degree polynomial. No. Oh. So for example, comparing these two integrations, you'll have, let's say, 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 let's just say. And then let's say that in the denominator is just an x plus 1. We cannot use the partial fraction steps because the bottom polynomial is to a lower degree than the numerator's polynomial. However, for something like the integral of 2x squared minus x plus 4 over x cubed plus 4x because the degree right here is higher than the degree right here, then we can use the partial fraction steps. So let's break down what the partial fraction steps would look like. Let's say for an example we have 1 over x plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. In this case, your 1 over x, your 1 over x is going to be your a. That 1 is your a. Then, your x is going to be your b. And, you might have guessed it, your negative 1 is going to be your c. Now, where does this come into play? So, there are four cases for the denominator of a partial fraction. Number one, it could be a distance linear fraction. So, for example, in the denominator, you could have it split up from a x minus 3, 2x minus 1, and 5x plus 1, and that would look like a over x minus 3 plus b over 2x minus 1 and c over 5x plus 1. And this is because you have three separate equations all using one term of x. The second is you could have a linear factors which would be, for example, x minus 2 and x minus 4 to the third. Now this would break down into a over x minus 2 plus b1 over x minus 4 plus b2 over x minus 4 squared 
and plus b3 x minus 4 cubed. Now this is because you have to take into consideration all of the powers. You have to take into consideration x to the fourth to the one power, x to the fourth to the two power, and x to the fourth to the three power, which is why there is b1, b2, and b3. The third is that you could have an irreducible quadratic. Now this would look like, for example, x minus 1 and x squared plus 1, which would break down into a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. Now, the reason why that there is a bx plus c is because in that second denominator, you have two x's because x squared is essentially x times x. Therefore, you need two terms in that numerator. The fourth and final case is the repeated irreducible quadratic. This, for example, would be x minus 3 and x squared plus 1 cubed. Now, like the linear factors, it would break down into a over x minus 3 plus bx plus c divided by x squared plus 1 plus b2x plus c2 over x squared plus 1 squared and b3x plus c3 over x squared plus 1 cubed. Now this essentially is combining case number 3 and case number 2, which is very likely um, in a lot of scenarios. So let's do an example. Let's use the example that we wrote all the way at the top. So 2x squared minus x plus 4 divided by x cubed plus 4. Uh, it should be 4x. Apologies. So we can actually break up the denominator because we can take out a common factor of x leading us to the new equation 2x squared minus x plus 4 divided by x times x squared plus 4. Now this is a case 3 and if you forgot what case 3 was it's basically a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 4. Now, again, the reason that it is bx plus c is because we have that x squared, which is two x terms, so we need two variables to fill in. So our first step is going to be we want them to have a common denominator. And in order to do this, we need to multiply a times x squared plus 4 and bx plus c times x. So what you would get is ax squared plus 4a plus bx squared plus cx because we're just factoring that x into um, our terms. Now what happens here is we need to go look back at the numerator. So if we look at our numerator we have 2x squared minus x plus 4. For every power that you have it's going to be the corresponding coefficient. And what I mean by this is since ax squared and bx squared both have that x squared, then their coefficient would be the 2 in the 2x squared in the numerator. And this would just follow down the line. So since there is only one cx term, only one single x term, then our, it would correspond with the negative 1 coefficient on minus x in the numerator. And since there is only one a term, one constant term, then that 4 in the numerator is going to correspond with that 4a. So now we need to solve for a, b, and c. Luckily for this one, it's pretty easy since we only have one c term, then our c is going to equal negative 1, and since we have 4a, it's going to equal 4, which if you just divide that out, a would be equal to 1. Since the AB term has the X squared, then you'll have to do A plus B equals 2 because it's that coefficient 2 from the numerator. And since we know that A equals 1, then it would be 1 plus B equals 2, which subtracting that 1, B would just equal 1. So now that we have what A, B, and C equal, then we can plug them back into our case 3, A over X plus BX plus C 
divided by x squared plus 4, and that would look something like this. 1 over x plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. So now from here, we're free to integrate. Now this one's going to be a little bit difficult to integrate since we do have to do integration by parts for that x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 4. But in the end, you will just get the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 half the natural log of x squared plus 4 minus 1 half arctangent of x over 2 plus c. And again, you would integrate that through parts using u and v, which is how I got that second answer.